Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to episode three of Sand Waltz. So today we're going to continue our journey in the rebuilding of the civilization of the Banner of Shadow. In the previous two episodes, we successfully set up an outpost here in the uh, converging point between several deserts down here. The topography is flat. It is really just one big uh, boring thing. But if we go downstairs, a completely different picture arises. Not only do we breach through several aquifers, uh, several different spots, we also have super early caverns. We have a city that has not too much room to evolve around. So... That's going to be very exciting. And I did a lot of thinking about how we're going to tackle that city building today. And I've come to the conclusion that the coolest and most uh, organic way to deal with the situation will be to simply mix living and working together. Usually my fortresses in the previous season were a strict division between living areas and working areas so we're going to do this differently here and uh, hopefully not succumb to any uh, foolishness on our way there so that means the level that we see here and the halls that we're uh, currently smoothing out will be as a matter of fact really our first foothold here in these lands and in this uh, city construction of sorts. So, since it is early autumn, we have things to do. So, first up, I want to set up a stockpile for gemstone so we can get ourselves some money makers going. We're going to carve up all the gemstone that is still lying around even if that is a certain risk for the first people that want to create an artifact. But there's plenty of gemstone to go around where we uh, started here, so I am not too worried in this regard. All right, we got a tavern and we now also got a dining hall and our friends from the mountain home last fortress arrive. So, it is time to assign a broker, and therefore it is time to find that one person that I made a proficient appraiser. So, Zaxul, it is your time to be introduced today as well, to be our dwarf feature of the day. Ah, oh, too bad that I don't know how to type that uh, funny letter in your name, man. Anyways, so he is the proficient armorsmith and appraiser of the fort. He does not feel the slightest need to reciprocate favors that others do for him, no matter how major the help or how much he needed it. He would never pass up a chance for a good fist fight. I like this guy. He lives at a slow going and leisurely pace. He doesn't generally think before acting. <laughs> He's currently more thoughtless. He has a tendency to consider ideas and abstractions over practical applications. He doesn't focus on material goods. He's brave in the face of imminent danger. He's currently more fearless. He tends to be swayed by the emotions of others. He's pleased by his own appearances and talents. He generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity and he occasionally overindulges does not easily hate or develop negative feelings, and he is currently more rude, confident, more shameless, and he's less private. I wonder what happened here. He whispers when he's nervous, and he chews his nails when he's thinking. I bet he could got caught in the rain. Oh no, he uh, he enjoys fistfights, you know, he's bored because he's not able to, to fight. All right, and he got into an argument, and he got caught in the rain, just like I said. And he was annoyed about the lack of chairs. Well, we did something about that. And I, I totally failed in delivering descriptions. I'm very sorry. He has a very high-pitched voice. 
His extremely narrow short ears are very splayed out. His very long beard is arranged in double braids and his sideburns are clean shaven. His very long moustache is arranged in double braids. He really like, seems to like these double braids. His very long hair is tied in a ponytail. His emerald eyes are close set and his eyelashes are short. His lips are thin, his brown skin is slightly wrinkled and his hair is cinnamon with a touch of grey. Welcome, Zaxul. So, Zaxul is our broker. So, oh, whoopsie, we need to do the ast aster asker asterisk thingy, Jack, sometimes. <laughs> so, luckily, we got ourselves a trade depot way before our time, and we got ourselves a nice amount of Opal to trade with. So, the Baroness Consort is arriving. So let's check our traders. Who are these people? Ah, uh, well, I'm relieved at least it's a dwarf. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a good start. Dwarf detected. So we can make business. Diplomacy. Now then. So what are we lacking mostly? Fuel. As usual. We can order fuel directly. But let's see if these guys are selling either bituminous coal or lignite directly. Yeah, they got some interesting sorts of stone, but nothing that I directly need. That is too bad. So, you guys don't have any pets to sell, no? <laughs> oh dear, they're so poor! <laughs> Yeah, uh, all right, then, um... I don't... D did I really not overlook these? Ah, yeah, I did overlook these. I knew it, that would be too uh, absurd. So, let's see, what could we use here? I mean, I got the basics on me, and I bet that the, uh... Immigrants will bring what we need now. We're going to stick with the usuals and order a bit of uh, coke and charcoal, as this will probably one of the uh, will be one one of the most useful goods that we can acquire outside from uh, whatever they decide to bring us. So some metal bars of different sorts. I like to buy these. Why not the hematite blocks too? They have a nice red tint to them. And uh, well, buying drink directly like that is too costly for my taste. So I'd be interested in Well, do we need an anvil? As a matter of fact, not. No, we are going to buy ourselves the leaves and the fruit and the meats. There we go. I do have a high focus on culinary diversity and we're going to offer them some gifts for, for, for the homelands. Because culinary diversity makes your uh, dwarfs damn happy. So, let's see. Preference wise, he likes phalarite, copper, honey yellow, beryl, raccoon leather, goblets, and guinea fowls for this social nature. Nature Consumes giant iguana, water, buffalo cheese. Well, it's at least acquirable. Alpacas, milk, and red beans absolutely just test slugs so so far this was a very successful first trade we do need another uh, office here though so let's uh, make that happen our stoneworks are now in high um, business however you want to call it heavy business Oh boy, there's so much gemstone rolling around here. 
So, let's get this done pronto pronto. And I really don't feel too well about our safety here. I really don't. So, let's just do a very, 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 very basic attempt at keeping us safe by setting up a couple of uh, cage traps like that. And I want to make sure that rather sooner than later we're going to get ourselves a real um, safety system here going with military and all. But uh, that's too early for today's episode. Because currently we haven't found any um, fuel ore of sorts. And that means... Oh, more gemstone. That means our... E even if we would be chucking out metals now, we'd be not really capable to, to process them in a larger scale. Sadly. Alright. So what we're going to do instead... We're going to set up a classy set of cage traps. No, you fools, not the hematite block. Jeez. I bought this for something fancy, not for some random thing in my defensive structure. <laughs> I tell you, you let them uh, you let them do their thing for for just one second, and they uh, they do something like that. They're like minions, basically. <laughs> nah, they're not. Okay. So one of our biggest issues currently is that we are only ten people, and that'll stay like this for a while. But let's see if the new arrivals from the last episode have brought new animals with them. No, they didn't. Okay. So, I want to employ a bookkeeper next, as I am growing tired of having only estimates of my, uh, of my stockpiles. That is just not really fulfilling. And we're going to set up a stockpile for aired meals. There we go. So the people working down here now have a really short way between their workplace and the, the fulfillment of their bodily desires. But what do you think here? So, we're talking about food, of course. Let's do another office and let's go for the bookkeeper. So, enter Stakud Katenkodor. That is surely not how a dwarf would uh, pronounce it. So, let's check out this fine young gentleman. Our new bookkeeper is a woman. She's rarely jealous. She strongly prefers discussions of ideas and abstract, concept, abstract concepts over handling specific practical issues. All right. She's a talker, not so much of a doer. That's okay. She lives at a high energy kinetic pace. She has a greedy streak. She's curious and eager to learn. She prefers to present herself modestly. She does not easily fall in love and rarely develops positive sentiments. She generally finds herself quite hopeful about the future. She's not particularly interested in what others think of her, and she's trusting. Oh, I need a drink. Oh. So, this is tea, not uh, booze, but uh, sometimes you have to drink if you keep reading like that. She isn't particularly ambitious. She generally acts impartially and is rarely moved to mercy. I don't know. She's a weird one. She generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity. She's quite comfortable with others that have different appearance or culture. She's quick to anger and she's a friendly individual. She surely is one individual. That's one thing that I read out of that as uh, there's a lot of weird things going on on her personality. Her hair is clean shaven. Yeah, that fits into the picture. 
She has a very high-pitched voice. Her close-set copper eyes are sunken, her nose is short, her small lobed ears are narrow, and her eyelashes are short. Her lips are thin, her hair is dark chestnut, and her skin is dark tan. And what do you like, Stakud? Gypsum plaster, sterling silver cat's eye clear glass, silvery gibbon leather, gibbon, gibbon, I don't know, pigtail fabric, the color puce quivers giant capuchins for their intelligence and the words of the tulip of petals when possible she prefers to consume giant wild boar and sand pear cider she absolutely detests purring maggots who doesn't the coot who doesn't <laughs> all right welcome aboard and uh, oh that doesn't do what it regularly does usually i can't do that uh that uh, roof thing above her, above the letter there, but not today. All right, so poor Stakud has a hole in her um, office, and she can office in her office without the throne being present already. Well, that's uh, that's a consequence of DF hack. So instead of uh, moping around now about the uh, Hole in the wall, we're just going to pretend as if it was a uh, part of the plan all along. So, where do we head next? We definitely have one thing that I really want to set up, and that is wooden bins, as we really have things to store here. Speaking about that, this is to me one big next quest storage room and the setup of a area where we can live and work because we have now one year until the next caravan arrives and up until then i want to have first results okay so yeah the wall is still set on any material that's why it happened wonderful so let's get to work. I'm going to use this level here, the entrance of it at least, for the sake of storage. I'm going to leave open a area here like that. And the idea of that left open area there is that here that's it is that we're going to have a um, option to widen it out uh, a little bit more later so let's do this like that this should do the trick now there we go symmetry restored so we're going to use this as a big hall where we will dump stuff into. Every fort needs a dump stuff into area and this will be ours. So we're going to use this here. Just like that. And let's continue like this. This will give us some breathing room, some place to work with, and at the same time, it structures, uh, it structures, uh, puts in a nice structural, structural look. Jeez, the human pikeman shed a rumor from abroad, and fresh arrivals. So let's see. Two, four, six, seven. Perfect. We have all of them catched before they have arrived. So let's see. Ushrir, the novice engraver. Almost mm -hmm. the mason. She's a talented mason, at least. Godin, the hunter. And also a bit of a lie maker. Yeah. Orlon. The metal crafter, all right. Litast, the woodcrafter, a high master woodcrafter, and they all hate the rain so much today. 
and Ustuth, the Fisher Dwarf, a High Master Fisher Dwarf at that. And last but not least, Etour, the Trader, who's also happening to be a skilled appraiser. Appraiser. Dear English deck. So, yeah, that's, a, uh, that's the people who came. We're going to have a closer look at them, of course, a little bit later in the series. Up until then, we're going to order that their animals will be properly put onto the underground pasture. And now we got to wait until this uh, beast here is excavated. For the handful of people that we got here, this is a pretty strenuous task, but uh, it is what it is and it is what we need. All right, in the meantime, I want to order another suite of diorite rock blocks. Though I don't know if we actually have that many left. Yeah, well, that's enough. We still got 20 boulders to spend. No problem. So, let's see. There's the limestone. Where did the diorite come from in the first place? There's the dolomite. There's the quartzite. Gabbro. Granite. Not from this corner of the map, that is. Heck, this place is so complicated. I thought it would be a great idea to do this and settle on so many different biomes at the same time. And now I don't know where my diorite is coming from. <laughs> well, we surely will find out. I, I know that I... Uh, I can feel already the camera blindness. This is a, a very unpleasant state of mind where you can actually not see what you want to see because your brain is busy talking and uh, i had that already several times where i really noticed that <laughs> it's quite funny that usually if i'm not recording i i'm clearly able to find what i'm looking for but uh if i'm recording it's like nope not this time buddy anyways the first thing that i want to have a proper flooring at is this little tavern joint because this is a, a place of hope for these people. The onions of paddling. That is really a disappointment, this name. But whatever. It is the onions of paddling. We have a place where we can rest our weary limbs at. And we are going to set up a proper city here next. But first, I think I will uh, set up room for three more beds as soon as the diorite blocks have been linked. So there, we, we, we can use a uh, trick with those diorite blocks. I, I can show you. We'll find out where the diorite comes from, and even without using our brain. <laughs> yeah, I know how. I mean, it would be too easy to just look in here into the stones menu. I could have... Now, now, now I have to do this. So, it's been that T-shaped corridor here, which led us ultimately there. That's where my diorite is coming from. I, I originally thought I could just follow the next worker and feel smart about it, but uh, that'll work too. Let's excavate a little bit extra. Quarrying is necessary. Okay, so we got now also our first line of defense if anything uh, horrible might happen. I mean, it ain't much. That set of cage traps is uh, surely no uh, super powerful safety mechanism or anything like that. But it is still way more than nothing. Alright, the storage room is ready. Let's store our leather here. Let's store our cloth here. I just want to get the uh, basic fundamentals down that we're uh, creating here. Let's see, can we combine armor and weapons? 
Yes, we can. And last but not least, I'm going to dedicate a pretty large portion of that directly for wood. All right, that'll keep them busy, I guess. And let's move on over here and do this exactly same thing to the opposite side where we're going to dig a staircase there. So more storage room to begin with. Since this is supposed to be a factory sort of uh, citadel, we can't really use that storage room. All right, rumors. What's that? A new lord somewhere on the other half of the world. Cheerio, my friend. Happy to know that. <laughs> Well, the humans of the uh, of this world surely got pretty quickly their uh, their nose in about our fort being a thing. Very interesting. Very interesting. The knowledgeable humans. This is one part about War Fortress where I sometimes ask myself, where do they get that intel from? <laughs> but let's just assume it was all a coincidence. Okay, so... This is where we are living at right now. So let's give this a little bit of a turn here. Nah, nah, we're going to make something like that. Now we branch off like this and branch off like that. And so. Here are a few very important corners for this fort. The first few temples. That's what it is. Let's give them some sort of a shape that they don't look so... Uh, samey. Okay. I was considering the uh, the time between this and the last episode that it might be fun to start considering that the uh, colonial products for this uh, place here might be um, might be encrusted or anything like that. So I was considering setting up a sort of a role play goal to make a certain decoration of sorts. It was something I really liked as an idea so let's see there is uh, well i cannot put sterling silver cat's eye or anything like that in there so well got nothing that the, the lady likes so we can't make any rock throne as we currently don't have any ordered and i realized the other uh, the other moment when i was looking at that that I have no loom currently installed. This is not good. We are uh, we are pro producing pigtail fiber, but we're not uh, but we're not making any fabric out of that. So I need to change that really quite desperately. I mean, this place here is hardly the place where I want to have my. Uh, textile industry for reals but ah well it's gonna be a start and we are going to move that around somewhere else later oh no not the hematite block again you fools 
I really must use the uh, classic menu to avoid that. There we go. Okay, so I still have to wrap my head around what kind of design we are going to strive for when it comes down to um, when it comes down to the uh, living rooms and uh, all those things. But for starters, I feel like I I do like what we're uh, where we're getting towards to here. So what I meant to do was setting up temples, as we now get in a, a certain civilization together. <laughs> Gravity. I still am happy that we don't have any followers of the of the, uh, the of the weird gods, so we can have a Erdem temple here. Or the mountains and the other temple that I just forgot the name for. So, these temples, of course, need decorations and uh, all those things, but uh, they are a brilliant way of making people happy. So, yeah, Erdem was the name. And Ral, the Earth God, is the other one. So we have some down to uh, the ground dwarfs here that are not following some weird dogmatic uh, stuff. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching, y'all. This is where we're going to end for today. So feel free to leave me your comments down below. I'm really all ears to hear it back from you. A thumbs up would be appreciated, consider subscribing, and check out the description box. There's plenty of links to go around, and I'd be super happy if you would gave them a look. There is the Savage Land Saga, 200 episodes of Dwarf. It's the previous series that I had with a world where I played a lot of fortresses as well. And there is, of course, also my Discord, where you can hang out with other Dwarf Fortress enjoyers and... Uh, other games of course and there's twitch i stream there every friday and sunday in the evening hours middle european time zone and of course there's patreon paypal buy me a coffee i'd be super happy if you gave those a look and last but not least check out the youtube membership program it's a nice way of supporting the channel and you get early access to all the videos that i have scheduled so far and I want to repeat at that point, no paywalled content ever. Free content it is, but the people who support via channel membership just can binge a little bit more of the stuff that I've pre-uploaded. That all being said, a big thanks to all the supporters. A big thanks especially to you watching this video up until the very end. I really appreciate. This means a lot to me and I hope you had a good time. See you all on the next video when we are going to start designing the bedrooms for reals. And we are going to go over our first basic ideas of what we are going to build here, I guess. Can't wait. See you all in the next one. Bye-bye.